Hello friends and welcome back. Let's talk about Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's autobiography, Waiting for a Visa, in detail in this video. In this video, we'll talk about the first part of his autobiography. The title of this part can be Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's Journey to Goregaon. Initially, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar tells us about his family. He tells that his family originally came from Dapoli Taluka of Rasna, Ratnagiri district of the Bombay Presidency. From the commencement of the rule of East India Company, his forefathers had left their hereditary occupation for the service in the army of the company. His father rose to the rank of an officer and was a subeda when he retired. First his father retired and decided to settle down at Dapoli, but then he went to Satara. The family left Dapoli for Satara where they lived till 1904. The first incident Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar records is the incident that took place in 1901 when he was in Satara. His mother was then died. His father was away on service as the cashier at the place called Goregaon in Katao Taluka in Satara. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar tells that when his father left them, he was along with his elder brother and the two sons of his eldest sister. His eldest sister too was dead. They were kept in charge of their aunt and some kind neighbors. His aunt was the kindest soul he knew, says he. But she was of no help to them. She was somewhat of a dwarf and had some trouble with her legs which made it very difficult for her to move about without the aid of somebody. Oftentimes, she had to be lifted. Dr. Ambedkar had sisters. They were married and were away living with their families. Cooking their food became a problem with them, especially as their aunt could not, on account of her helplessness, manage the job. The four children went to school and they cooked their food. They could not prepare bread so they lived on pulao, which they found to be the easiest dish to prepare, requiring nothing more than mixing rice and mutton. Being a cashier, his father could not leave his station to come to Satara to see them. Therefore, he wrote to them to go to Goregaon and spend their summer vacations with him. Dr. Ambedkar's father had given all the particulars regarding their journey and had told them to inform him on which day they were starting, so that he could send his peon to the railway station to meet them and to take them to Goregaon. According to this arrangement, Dr. Ambedkar, his brother and his sister's sons left Satara and his aunt was kept in charge of the neighbors. When they reached railway station, his brother brought out tickets and gave him and his sister's son to and as each his pocket money to be spent at, a, at their own pleasure. They once began their career of righteous living and each of them ordered a bottle of lemonade at the start. After the short while, the train whistled and they boarded. Masur was the nearest railway station for Goregaon. The train arrived at Masur at about five in the evening and the children get down with their luggage. In a few minutes, all the passengers go away and train leaves for its destination. The four children remain on the platform looking out for their father or his servant whom his father has promised to send. Long did they wait, but no one turns up. An hour goes, the station master comes to inquire. He asks for the tickets. They show him the tickets. He asks as to why they were tarried. They tell the station master that their father was supposed to come to take them or he was supposed to send a servant to take them. They were all good dressed children. From their dress, station master could not make out that they were the children of untouchables. Indeed, the station master was quite sure that they were Brahmin children and he was extremely touched at the plight in which he found those children. When the station master learns that they were the children of untouchables, especially Mahars, his face undergoes a sudden change. Uh, the children could see that he was overpowered by the strange feeling of repulsion. 15 to 20 minutes, the children stand there, the sun was almost setting, the father had not turned up or he did not send his servant and now the station master also had to leave. 
They were quite bewildered as what they should do and their happiness was turning into the sadness. There were bullock carts to be taken to Goregaon, but as the cartsmen knew that they were the children of Mahas, they were not ready to take them to Goregaon. The children were ready to pay double the fare, but the cartsmen were not ready to take untouchable children with them into their carts. This was a very difficult situation. However, the station master found a solution. The solution was the children themselves will drive the cart and the owner of the cart will walk behind them till he reaches Goregao in return of double the fare needed to go to Goregao. The cartsman tells them that Goregao is the three hours journey from the railway station. So they start with the cartsman. Cartsman walks behind them and the children themselves drive the cart. When they travel a little distance from the railway station, their cartsman tells them to have their food at the riverside and asks them to give some money so that he goes to the village and gets something for his meal. The children give him money and he goes into the village promising a very soon return. The children try to find a good place where they can sit and eat and drink water but to their surprise they find that that water is stinking it wasn't a water meant for the human beings to be used it was mixed with animal excreta and a lot of other things it was totally muddy so they give up the idea of eating there the cartsman returns and they begin their journey again but the cartsman soon jumps into the cart and takes the reins into his hand to the surprise of the children it was more than three hours but there was no sign of Goregaon. The children were afraid. They thought that this cartman will rob them of their gold and money and would probably kill them. Therefore they asked him to stop. But cartman was assuring them that they cannot stop at a place where there is no light and there is nothing else to sit by. Suddenly they see a light. It was the light of the toll collector's hut. It takes them a lot of time to reach the toll collector's hut. The cartsman stops at the toll collector's hut and tells the children to rest for the night and tells them that they'll resume their journey to Gorega early in the morning. They were hungry, so they asked the cartsman if they could get water here. The cartsman tells them that if the toll collector knows that they are Mahars, he'll not give them the water. So he asks them to tell him that they are the Mahmadans. The children go and tell the toll collector that they are the Muslims, but the toll collector doesn't give them the water. Dr. Ambedkar's experience with untouchability is so bad. He writes, There was plenty of food with us. There was hunger burning within us. With all this, we were to sleep without food. That was because we could not get water. And we could get no water because we were untouchables. They sleep without food, get up early in the morning and start at 8 and reach Goregaon at 11. His father was surprised to see them there and he said that he had received no information from them. They tell him that they had posted uh, the letter giving intimation. His father denies the fact. Subsequently, it was discovered that the fault was of his father's servant. He had received their letter but failed to give it to his father. Dr. Ambedkar tells us this incident had made a great impact on his mind. He knew that there was something called untouchability and that untouchables were subject to certain indignities and discrimination. For example, he was not allowed to sit with all other children in the school. He was asked to sit in the corner on a gunny cloth. This gunny cloth was given to him. His servant wouldn't touch this gunny cloth, so he, has, he had to carry this gunny cloth home and bring it back the next day. Even he could not get the water unless it, the tap is opened by some touchable person. That was the condition. In case of all other students, what they needed was the permission of the teacher. But in case of Dr. Ambedkar, it was not the permission of the teacher that was enough. He also needed someone to open the tap for him to quench his thirst. He also knew that they had to wash their clothes or their sister had to wash their clothes, not because they did not have the money, but because they were untouchables and the washerman wouldn't touch the clothes of an untouchable. The barbers in Satara would not cut their hair because they were untouchable, so they done the task of cutting their hair, hairs amongst themselves. Sometimes 
Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's sister used to do, do this task. All this Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar knew, but he says, this incident gave me a shock such as I never received before, and it made me think about untouchability, which before this incident happened was with me a matter of course, as if is with many untouchables as well as the touchables. The first part of his autobiography ends here. I think it was useful. And if you think that it was useful, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new to it. Thank you very much for watching.